This is a technical note for a patellar tendon open debridement and reconstruction with hamstring tendon autograft for a severe patellar tendinopathy. The disclosures for the senior author are listed. The patient is positioned in a supine position on the operating table and a bilateral knee exam under anesthesia is performed to validate the clinical findings. A high left thigh tourniquet is placed and both legs are draped in a sterile manner. The surgical approach was performed first with an anterior knee incision that extended from superior to the patella to distal to the tibial tuberosity. A fine dissection was carried out down to the extensor mechanism. After exposing the extensor mechanism, the sharp debridement of the patellar tendon can be performed. To remove these tissues, a vertical incision was made and all the non-viable tissue was removed with a scalpel and rongeur until normal appearing tissue remained. This vertical incision will be closed at the end of the procedure. For this patient, about 70% of the tissue at the deep and central aspect at the superior pole of the patellar tendon was detached, thickened, and irritated. Next, the location for the patellar tendon reconstruction tibial tubercle tunnel is identified. The periosteum was carefully elevated up at both sites on either side of the tibial tubercle. An ACL tibial guide was used to drill a beef pin horizontally across the tubercle. This was overreamed with a 4.5 mm endo button reamer and a passing stitch was placed. Next, graft harvest of the hamstring autografts was performed. A dissection was carried out to expose both the gracilis and semitendinosus tendons. The tendons were isolated out and the adhesions were removed using a large cob elevator. An open hamstring harvester was used to harvest both grafts. They were left attached at their tibial insertions. A metal ruler is used to scrape residual muscle from the tendons and the ends are whip stitched with number two non-absorbable suture. In this case, since the gracilis was the longer of the two hamstring grafts, it was passed from medial to lateral across the tibial tubercle tunnel. The semitendinosus graft is passed proximally within the tissues along the medial edge of the patellar tendon to the distal portion of the patella. Next, a Q-fix anchor was placed at the graft entry of the tibial tubercle. This medial Q-fix anchor ties down both the semitendinosus and gracilis grafts. Next, a Q-fix anchor is placed at the graft exit site. This lateral Q-fix ties down the gracilis graft. Next, a spinal needle was placed to mark the superior pole of the patella. The patella length was measured to find the midpoint. A dissection was carried down to the bone and a guide pin was drilled horizontally from lateral to medial across the patella at this point. This was overreamed with a 4.5 mm endo button reamer. The grafts were then passed deep to the fascia along the medial and lateral edges of the patella up to the site of the drilled patella tunnel. The gracilis graft was passed along the lateral edge of the patella tendon and then from lateral to medial through the patella tunnel. The semitendinosus graft was passed along the medial edge of the patella tendon and from medial to lateral through the patella tunnel. Both are passed using a Houston suture passer. When starting arthroscopy, care should be taken to ensure the portals do not amputate the grafts that have already been passed. Next, the rest of the surgery is performed. For this patient, this included arthroscopy to evaluate the internal structures of the knee. The ACL, PCL, and medial lateral compartments of his knee were normal. The inferior pole of his patella had some grade 2 chondromalacia, and a gentle patellar chondroplasty was performed. Finally, the graft fixation for the patellar tendon reconstruction was completed. The grafts are sutured to each other at the entry and exit tunnels of the patella tunnel. During this step, it is critical to ensure the patella height is in the correct position and the grafts are taut during flexion of the knee. Once the grafts are tied to each other at the medial and lateral aspects of the patella tunnel, they are passed within the tissues distally along the medial and lateral edges of the original graft position. These extra portions of the graft are then sewn into the grafts that were already positioned. This reinforces the reconstruction. The site of the patella tendon debridement was closed with ovicral sutures. The tourniquet was let down and the deep and superficial tissues were closed with suture.